Okay, so hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the Tech Colloquium. Uh, today we're very lucky to have Jens Vegan from the University of Bonn. So Jens uh, works in combinatorial optimization and applications. He has a very uh, prodigious research output. Uh, he's co-editor of uh, many uh, journals and is the author of two textbooks, including a very famous textbook on combinatorial optimization that many in the audience might be familiar with. Um, today, he's going to be telling us about traveling salesman problems, approximation algorithms, and black box reductions. So please uh, go ahead, Jens. Thanks for the nice introduction and for the invitation. Um, so much of my recent research has been devoted to the traveling salesman problem invariant, and this is also what the talk uh, about is today. There are two parts mainly. One is joint work with uh, Vera Traub and Rico Senklusen, and the other one with Janis Blaut and Vera Traub. So, oh, now I cannot switch the, oops, okay. Good, so the traveling salesman problem, everybody knows it. Um, so one way to formulate it is that you have a metric um, and you want to visit all points in the metric space uh, in a round trip that has minimum cost. I will look at it in a slightly different way, which is equivalent, however, where you have an undirected graph and uh, non-negative costs on the edges. And we're asking for the cheapest closed walk in G. And of course, uh, if you could have the complete graph with triangle inequality, but you don't necessarily have to. And this is a useful formulation for the following. And there's a variant that we will also consider called path TSP, where instead of a round trip, you are given two vertices S and T, and you're looking for a walk from S to T that visits all vertices on the way. And this is the symmetric variant. There's also an asymmetric variant where it's just the same problem, except that you have a digraph instead of an undirected graph. Um, so every edge has a direction and you have to travel in that direction. And uh, here are two examples of uh, solutions in blue. Again, that the uh, path version as well. Now, um, we will also look at uh, the classical linear programming relaxations that uh, essentially go back to Dunsett, Fulkerson, and Johnson from the 1950s, um, also studied by Held and Karp and others. Sometimes it's called the Held Karp LP. Um, so we have a variable for every edge of our graph, xe, which should be non-negative, and which should tell us how many copies of that edge we buy. And then for a round trip, we want to have in degree equals out degree everywhere. For the path version uh, at S, we want to have out degree one more than in degree and converse at T. And also we have these um, cut constraints that guarantee the connectivity of the tour. So for every subset that does not include S and T, um, we need to enter it once and leave it once. So we need two edges going in. Okay, there's some handy notation that we will use in the following that is pretty standard, I think. Um, so the question that we ask is how good approximation algorithms can be designed? So we know that all these problems are NP hard, but how well can we approximate them in polynomial time? And we often compare the result of approximation algorithms to the linear programming lower bound. And so a very interesting related question is, what is actually the integrality ratio of these LPs? So what is the worst ratio of uh, an integral solution over a fraction solution? And we will discuss uh, reductions in this talk. So we would like to reduce one problem to the other, saying that one problem is not harder than another problem. So to understand we have so many variants, then maybe some of them are just equivalent. So that makes it, of course, easier to deal with. So um, there are a few negative results before we go to the positive results. The inapproximability uh, rebounds are pretty weak or pretty close to one. Um, we are far from uh, reaching those. And as for the integrality ratios, we also don't know the integrality ratios for almost all of these variants. 
And uh, we have lower bounds that some people believe to be the true answer. Um, we also have upper bounds that we will see, um, but uh, in most cases, they don't match. Okay, so let's first review uh, the progress on the asymmetric TSP. So before 2017, no constant factor approximation algorithm was known when Svensson, Tarnowski, and Weg found one. Um, that was then, uh, we improved that to uh, factor 22 a few years ago. And uh, now actually we can do it even better. This is not the subject of this talk, but we can do 17 or 17 plus epsilon. And uh, interestingly, we can also do the same ratio for the path version of the ATSP. Although we don't have a reduction that tells, we can always reduce the path version to um, the asymmetric TSP. But uh, in, it turns out that we get the same ratio uh, nevertheless. And uh, here's the situation for the symmetric TSP. So where um, the, for the classical circuit version, Christophides algorithm was for a long time the best. Um, which is approximation ratio of three half. I think everybody knows this. The same algorithm, or essentially the same algorithm for the path version gives only a ratio of five thirds, as was shown by Hochefin. And that was improved then for the first time by Ankleinberg and Schmoyes. And then a sequence of papers improved that. It seemed to be a much harder problem than um, the classical TSP. And it took a long time to get us to three half plus epsilon, then finally to three half, also for the part version. But the algorithms were very different and more complicated, definitely, than Christophides. So, is this really a different problem? That was the question we asked ourselves. Now, here's the situation for the special case of a unit weight metrics that has been studied a lot because. The worst examples for the integrality ratios are all unit weight uh, examples. And here we have a seven fifths approximation algorithm with Andras Schäbel for graph TSP. For the path version, we didn't have anything like this. We had three half there. We could improve it slightly below three half, um, but there was still a substantial gap. Now, what we then proved with uh, Vera and Rico is that actually the path version is not much harder than the TSP. So we have a very strong uh, reduction result saying that, that any alpha approximation algorithm for TSP implies the same ratio up to an arbitrary small epsilon for the path TSP. And the same holds also for the graph special case. So in particular, so the ratios will never uh, be different anymore in the future. And for the graph version, we close the gap immediately up to an epsilon again. So that will be um, the first part of my talk. It also implies that the very recent improvement on the Christophides, or I should maybe say Christophides Serdyukov algorithm uh, by Anna Karlin, Nathan Klein, and Shayano Weiss Garan, uh, who got a three half minus epsilon approximation for TSP immediately gives us a three half minus epsilon for the path version just by applying our reduction. Um, okay, so let's see how did we prove that um, this main redu reduction result. So first, uh, let us look at a very simple approach. So what you could do is, um, so we are always assuming we have an alpha approximation algorithm for TSP. So maybe just apply it, ignore that we have SNT, forget about it for now, just find a TSP solution. And then uh, of course, S and T have even degree as all the other vertices. So we need to make these degrees odd. The simplest thing we could do is just add an ST path, the shortest ST path. That gives a feasible solution. I mean, this is the footprint of an uh, ST walk that visits all vertices, so that's fine. Um, but uh, the question is, how good is that? Of course, this is a good solution if S and T are very close, right? If S and T are uh, 
only epsilon away, this gives, uh, this loses only epsilon in the approximation guarantee and she has the precise statement. But of course, this will not always be the case and in difficult instances, it will not be the case. But that's one idea that uh, we could, should keep in mind. Now, another idea um, was observed by Vera Traub uh, five years ago. She showed that uh, for the path version, one can actually uh, reduce to instances where the distance is not too large. It's at most one third of the cost of an optimum solution. And I show you the idea of this uh, construction because it leads to the direction of the, the main theorem. So um, let's look at S and T and look, let's look at the distance cut. So L0 contains all the vertices at distance zero from S, L1 all the dis vertices at distance at most one from S and so on. Let's assume unit cost for simplicity, but the same works for arbitrary non-negative costs. And then if we have an ST tour, since it goes from S to T, it has to cross each of these cuts an odd number of times. So an odd number of times means either exactly once or at least three times. Now, if we cross every cut at least three times, well, we, we spend a lot of uh, cost compared to the distance of S to T. We, our, our solution would have been at least three times as expensive as the distance. Or in other words, if the distance is significantly larger than a third uh, times opt, third times the cost of an optimum tour, then there must be a, a constant fraction of these cuts here in shown in green, which an optimum tour would cross only once. And now the idea is to kind of guess these cuts, these green cuts and the green edges. And we will do this by a dynamic program. And for this, to this end, we look at every section between two of these cuts. I mean, there's only a quadratic number of such sections. And for each section, you consider all possible choices of the green edges. Again, there's only a quadratic number, so this can simply be enumerated. And for each of these possibilities, we just evaluate the cost of a tour that goes from the endpoint of this red ed green edge uh, to the other end point. And now you find an optimum tour, well, an optimum tour we cannot find, that's again the same problem, but we will recursively call our same algorithm to, um, to solve uh, this path TSP instance here. And we solve it, do it for all the instances, all the instances that we could possibly have by all sections and all green edges. And then we simply patch them together in an optimal way. And that's a simple dynamic program to do that. So here's the algorithm uh, overall. So if the distance is small, then we assume we have some algorithm already. So we just apply it. If the distance is large, we have a constant fraction of an op tour um, that we can guess because these are single edges in these special ST cuts that we know. So we guess them by a dynamic program and we recurse on the sub instances. And uh, if you work out the details that really works and reduces to this case. But of course, you see that there's still a gap. I mean, we solved the case where the distance is really tiny and, and um, we don't have to consider the case where the distance is larger than one third, but there's a huge gap in between, between epsilon and the third essentially. So what do we do there? Now we try to um, guess more edges. So, if before we could do something if the distance is larger than a third. Now assume that the distance is larger than one over k plus one, where k is some constant that you can choose as large as you like. Think of one over epsilon. So. Um, then um, if the distance is larger than that, then you know that there's a substantial fraction of uh, these cuts from S to T, these ST cuts that we have computed, where we have at most k edges. So in this picture, k is five, 
And so we would like to uh, guess the cuts and the green edges in the, these cuts, um, where the green cuts are defined so that the, an optimum tour that we don't know, of course, um, has at most five edges in these cuts. So you see here three out of four edges are of this kind, three out of four cuts. And uh, again, we try to guess these cuts and these edges by a dynamic program. Now to this end, we again have to look at all the possible sections. Again, this is not many, this is just a quadratic number and all possible choices of green edges, which are now many more, but still a polynomial number for a fixed K. The main trouble is actually that what you have now in between is no longer a path TSP instance. This doesn't really look like a path TSP instance because where is S and where is T? Well, you have here five edges entering and the other side also five edges leaving. It's not even connected. So we have a different kind of problem here. And uh, so there's is a question. Uh, in the chat. Okay, just Swami says goodbye. Uh, hi, Swami. Um, so, um, what kind of problem is this? And that was somehow the main concept that we developed. We called it Phi TSP. So, we first look at um, uh, what we call the interface. So, all the vertices that are connected to an edge, to a green edge that brings us outside. They will call we call it interface vertices, and there are two kinds depending on the parity that we have. So um, the squares need odd parity. We call this set T, and the circles, the remaining vertices in this interface I, um, they need even degree in our solution. So to make the overall degree correct, which means even everywhere except at S and T. So that's one thing, the uh, parity constraints need, need to be observed. And, but we also need connectivity, right? These, uh, we need to connect things up. So the tour, the part of the tour that is inside our segment must connect certain interface vertices. So we determine a partition of the interface vertices that should be connected by our tour or that the op tour will connect, which you see here in this picture. So a phi TSP instance consists of the, just this a set of interface vertices, some of which need odd and some of which need even parity and a partition of the interface vertices that defines connectivity requirements. And a solution would now be a set of edges or a multi set of edges such that every vertex is somehow connected to an interface vertex, uh, has an interface vertex in the same connected component. The parity is correct, which means it definitely must be even for every non-interface vertex, vertex, and it must be what is required for every interface vertex. And we must at least satisfy the connectivity requirements. We can connect more if we want, but we need to connect at least um, the sets CI. And here you see a different solution to the same uh, Phi TSP instance. And so the inner problem that we need to solve is Phi TSP. So we will not recurse on path TSP instance anymore, but we recurse on Phi TSP. That means we need to solve the whole machinery for Phi TSP because we get many recursion levels. Although a constant number, but still many. And now for Phi TSP, one difference is that we no longer have two vertices that require odd degree, but a whole set capital T of vertices that require odd degree. And uh, so the equivalent to an ST path that we would add in the simple case where S and T are very nearby would be here a T join, which would correct the parities uh, of T. So uh, now we distinguish not whether the distance is short or not, we distinguish whether there exists a short T join or not. If a T short T join exists, you can think of 
it might be easy to reduce it to TSP. You just source the TSP and add the T join. Well, it's not the same because the whole graph might not even connect it and uh, the subgraph that you're considering. And uh, you have these connectivity requirements, but with a little extra work, you can actually reduce it to TSP if there is a short T join. And if there's not a short T join, that means by LP duality, there is a large fractional T cut packing, which is just the solution of the dual LP. And you know, this T cut packing is a packing of T cuts, um, which has a laminar structure, like in this picture. And uh, then you, this laminar structure works like a tree. You have some set here, like this big set here, um, which might be one of these sets the end of a segment before. So one of these sets where you guess that you have a constant number of green edges. And then you look at the children, the, the um, largest proper subsets that have also a constant number of green edges. And you look at all possible uh, constellations. And in between, you find that you again have this phi TSP structure. And you can apply this and, and, uh, and recurse, and that's the idea of the proof. Okay, this uh, is, was a quick glance on this, this first result I wanted to talk about. There are a couple of open questions that are interesting. So one thing is we can solve a phi TSP and reduce it to TSP, but only for instances that have a constant size interface. So where the number of interface vertices is constant. Initially, we have our interface was just two, S and T, right? Two vertices. In every recursion level, the size of the interface grows, but it is still constant. If we have arbitrary interfaces, we don't know what to do. And um, one special case would be the T to a problem, which is just the TSP, but with different parity constraints um, where the T vertices must have odd degree. And there we still don't know a three half approximation algorithm, for example, 11 over seven is the best we currently know. Then this reduction nicely reduces path TSP to TSP, but it does not tell anything about the integrality ratio of the LP. And that's somehow a shortcoming of this proof uh, because we really would like to show that the integrality ratio of path TSP is three half, which we believe is the right answer. Uh, three half is the lower bound that we know, and the upper bound is 1.528, which is certainly not the right answer. Right. So that's also an open question. And uh, can we make such a construction work for the asymmetric case? That would be very interesting. So we have reductions from uh, ATSP, from path ATSP to ATSP, uh, but they entail a loss. So for example, the phygazine construction entails a loss of a factor two. Um, so um, that's another open question that we cannot answer at the moment. Okay, I would like to give a second uh, reduction to the traveling salesman problem of a completely different problem, but um, it's also a black box reduction to the TSP. So that's the common feature. And this is a very famous problem uh, also studied since the 1950s, um, the capacitated vehicle routing problem. It's some of the prime example. There are many vehicle routing problems, but this is the most popular one. So what is the problem? We have a set V of customers. And in addition, we have a depot that we will denote by S in this talk. We have again a metric, this lie in a metric space. And every customer comes with a demand. And by scaling, I just assume that the demand is some number between zero and one. And one will be the vehicle capacity. So now again, I have to serve as in the TSP, I have to serve all the customers, but my vehicle has a limited capacity. So I cannot do it all with one vehicle. So what I now ask for is not just one tour, but a set of tours. Every tour must be a cycle that starts at the depot and returns to the depot. 
every customer must be served. So every customer must belong to, let's say exactly one tour. And then we have the capacity constraint that makes it different from the TSP, namely um, the total demand in every tour must be at most one. And again, the objective function is just to minimize the total length of the tours. So there are some variants of this problem, but uh, say this is the standard problem. Um, now, when it comes to approximation algorithms, the first uh, interesting result was uh, the special case of unit demands. Every customer has the same demands, say one over K. So that means we can serve K customers with every tour. Um, there, Heimovich and Renoy can devise an alpha plus one approximation algorithm, where alpha is the approximation ratio of a TSP. So that was again a black box reduction to TSP. And at that time, alpha was, of course, for many, many years, uh, three over two. The same works for splittable demand. So that's a variant of the problem where you can uh, serve a customer partially conserve the demand by, by several tours. So part of the demand is served by one tour and another part by a different tour, which is normally not allowed, but that's the splittable version where you get also this alpha plus one. And for the general capacity vehicle routing, the unsplittable version, um, a modification, a similar variant of this algorithm was analyzed by Altin, Kema and Gavish in 1987, and that gave an alpha plus two approximation algorithm. And this was not improved for more than 30 years, this result. There was a lot of research on special cases, uh, very special metrics, um, um, Euclidean plane, uh, tree metrics, uh, special situations with very small vehicle capacities, etc. But no improvement of the general case. Now, um, we could improve on this um, with Janis Blaut and Vera Traub by simply a better black box reduction. So instead of alpha plus two, we get alpha plus two minus some constant. And this constant is not huge, but it is at least also, I mean, we can, can write it down, right? Roughly one over 3000. The constant epsilon that the all improvement depends actually on the approximation guarantee on alpha. If you think about it, it has to depend on it. Uh, but um, yeah, for alpha three half, it is in this range, in this order of magnitude. So to understand this, how this works, uh, let's review this classical Alten Kema Gavish uh, algorithm. So it runs in two steps. The first step is just compute a TSP tour, just ignore the capacity constraint, compute one tour that serves all customer. And that for this, we just apply our given alpha approximation algorithm for TSP. And then we split this tour into shorter tours by returning to the depot where appropriate. And we can do this splitting in an optimal way. That's a simple dynamic program that you can do. And uh, this gives the result. So it's very simple. And why does it give the result? We, let's, let's analyze this algorithm. Um, so the main um, observation is that partitioning this, this TSP tour in order to meet the capacity constraints will increase the cost by at most four times this sum, the sum over all customers. And for each customer, I multiply the demand with the distance to the depot. So the proof fits on this slide of the whole uh, analysis. So we take a random offset tau, and then uh, I sum up the demands starting at the depot following my TSP tour. And whenever I reach tau, one plus tau, two plus tau, etc., I set a marker and I mark these customers. Now it's, it's trivial to see that uh, each customer is marked with probability it's demand, right? And if a customer is marked, I will do the following. I will just, before I reach this customer, I will go back to the depot. 
Then I go to my customer and serve only this customer by a tour, go back to the depot again. And then I go back and to serve the, the remaining tour. I start the next tour again from there. So this it's four times the distance to the depot and clearly it meets the capacity constraints. And since there's one solution, one way to do it, dynamic programming will find at least a good, as good solution. So this proves this, this theorem by Algen Kemmer and Gavish. And now the only other thing that you need to see that if this gives the alpha plus two approximation algorithm is this little proposition that uh, this sum twice the demand times the distance to the depot is a, is a lower bound on opt. And why is that? That's very easy, it's even easier to see. And um, so here is one tour of the optimal solution. And if you look at one customer V, we can simply split the tour into two paths from the depot to V. So clearly twice the distance is at most the cost of the tour. We have this inequality for every customer. So we can take the weighted sum weighted by the demands. So we get this inequality. And since the sum of the demands in this tour is at most one, um, this is at most the cost of the tour. Now this we did for one tour of the optimum solution. If we sum it up for all tours in the optimum solution, you get exactly this inequality, this claim, which was now the complete proof of the alpha plus two by Alden, Gamer, and Gavish. And you see that um, this guarantee is tight only if this inequality here is tight. Right? If this sum is much smaller than opt, this immediately gives something better. So let's call an instance difficult if it doesn't, if this inequality is more or less tight. Fix some small epsilon for now. So if the instance is not difficult, we immediately have something better by the previous analysis. So we will find something better for difficult instances. And therefore we exploit the structure of difficult instances. And there's actually a lot of structure in these instances. So here's one thing. Um, almost every tour in an optimal solution to a difficult instance looks as in the picture. We have, I call the peak of the tour the customer that is furthest away from the depot. So our tour would travel more or less without detour to the peak and then back to the depot more or less directly. And almost all the customers, almost all the other customers are very close to the peak. I mean, this is not a precise mathematical statement but you can easily make it precise. And uh, so we call the neighborhood of the peak. So the, um, the customers that are not far away, the peak cluster and the total demand of the peak cluster is almost one. That means almost all of the demand is there. And also the tour is almost full. It's not true for every tour, but it's the other, the exceptions make just an epsilon fraction that we can ignore. Well, and that was the other thing that I said, uh, the tour has small detours, so we can split it into two paths from the depot to the peak. And both of these paths, although they visit some customers on the way, they are almost shortest paths. Okay, we use this structure to compute um, a TSP tour of cost essentially opt. So we compute a TSP tour that is um, uh, not or only a little bit more expensive than the cost of an optimum overall solution. And that gives the improvement because uh, in the Algen Kimmer Gavish, we only got a TSP tour of cost alpha times opt. And here we get an essentially optimal TSP tour. And then we can just do the standard tour splitting argument uh, to get an improvement because that's already better which might not be optimal, but that's at least sufficient to do this. So how can we get this TSP tour? Um, now suppose for a moment that we know the peaks of the tours in an optimal solution 
Of course, we don't know them, but suppose we, we get them for somehow. Then what we need is um, to find a set of paths starting at the depot so that exactly two paths end, of, end at each peak. And these two paths will make the tour then, reconstruct the tour of our optimal solution. And each customer must be visited by some of the paths. And we know that, um, and once we have this, we can compute a TSP tour uh, just by uh, appending all these paths and, and shortcutting. So we have an Eulerian graph and we can do the usual thing. We know that there exists a set of paths that costs up, namely the optimum solution um, that has this property and has small detour because it is, consists of almost shortest path to the peak. And now we showed that actually we can compute a solution, such path that costs not much more, namely one plus eta times, eta we can make very small times um, the cost of these paths. Well, plus a constant times the detour, but the detour is very small. So uh, overall, this is not much larger. So how do we do this? Um, so in an easier, even easier case is when all the edges go forward. So you always go away from the depot with every step brings you further away from the depot. And then it, this is actually a very simple or quite fairly simple exercise to solve this by Minkos flow. This you can solve optimally. Then. Of course, it's not quite the case, but um, you know that there's a small detour. There's a solution with small total detour. So you know that uh, every arc in this solution either brings you further away from the depot or is short. I mean, again, there can be an epsilon fraction of exceptions, but not many. So what we do is we select a subset of the customers carefully. So to get rid of these uh, exceptions, we, by the network flow algorithm, we just compute a um, um, solution that visits all the customers in this subset and goes to the peak peaks, this is not just one peak, but here just in the picture, it is just one. And then we have some omitted customers, but these you just connect by a cheapest forest and double the forest and, and put them in to the tour. So that's uh, combinatorial actually um, uh, very fast n cube algorithm uh, to solve this problem. One can also do an LP based approach uh, based on a similar approach for uh, so called regret bounded vehicle routing by Frickstad and Swami. Um, but um, uh, that gives uh, is maybe a bit more complicated, it gives a slightly better approximation guarantee. Okay, there's one more thing I should tell uh, you, namely, so far, I assume that we know already the peaks of an optimal solution, which is, of course, not the case. But we somehow want to determine their approximate locations. And for this, we exploit the structure that we have. We know the structure of the tour. We have these large peak clusters, and that we can exploit. So call a peak cluster large if its total demand is uh, almost one. So here could be an optimum solution of a difficult instance. Again, most of the tours look like the orange one. Um, they have a large peak cluster and they travel a long time here. Then most of the customers are here and then they go back, but there can be some exceptions and the blue and the green look similar. Well, the red one, not quite. As I said, there can be some exceptions which are not very long, um, which make only a small fraction of the total cost. We can have also some clusters that are not really peak clusters, but still we have many customers there. That can also happen, of course. Now, of course, we don't know the optimal solution. So that's the picture that we really have, right? And now we want to guess the peak clusters. So how do we do it? We just do it really. Uh, we start from right to left, so furthest away from the depot. 
we look at this first red point, we look at what would be in the P cluster. If this is enough, if this, the, the demand is approximately one or more, we would uh, say, okay, T1 should be a peak, should be a target for us. Then we continue the next, and we, we mark all the vertices that uh, are already done inside. Then the next one would be this one. We look at the remaining vertices in this, what would be the P cluster. But now since here, one of the vertices is already taken by the other one, this might not be large enough. So we would skip it. We would continue here. This is again, large enough. This would be our T2. And maybe we find another one here, which was a fake cluster that can also happen, which would be T3 then. But now we still have tours of the optimal solution um, whose P cluster we didn't really detect, right? But by our algorithm, um, at least this P cluster, this blue P cluster of the blue tour will overlap with some existing P cluster. Otherwise we would have taken it. And so we would increase the size of these P cluster sets, the C sets, we would increase them to sets that I call B here. And then clearly, we can, we can calculate that uh, each large P cluster of an optimal solution is in one of these sets. Of course, they are no longer disjoint. So we have now, we have to merge several of these sets. That's why we um, call these now not single targets, but target groups. So here we have one single target T3 and then a target group T1, T2. Um, okay. And then we look at the total demand in these regions. So here the demand is approximately three. That means we guess probably three tours should end there. That means I I'm asking for six paths ending somewhere in this region. So in T T1 or T2, I, I will not care where exactly, because I don't know. And here it's easier, just two paths should end in T3. Okay, and this is the problem we call vehicle routing with target groups. So we have these targets, we have uh, partitioned them into groups. And for each group, we tell how many paths should end there. And now we find paths starting at the depot, ending at the, in these target groups, at targets of the target group and the appropriate number in each group. And all the customers must be visited on the way. And we can solve this problem similarly to the earlier problem where we had the peaks already known single peaks. So that is, uh, again, can be solved by an extension of the same algorithm. So we can solve this and we can compute a solution of this problem that is essentially, has essentially cost opt. Now this is almost an Eulerian graph that contains all customers. Well, it's not quite Eulerian because we might have odd degree at targets of a non-trivial target group. Like here we have degree three at T1 and T2. And to fix that, we just add the cheapest matching. And now we can argue that the matching is really not too expensive. And uh, so that's just because you look at the connected component of a target group, you find a spanning tree between these targets, the matching can clearly you can clearly find a matching that is a subset of the spanning tree. So you just mount the spanning tree. Um, you can orient this as an arborist sense, and you can see that uh, you can associate each edge with some of the radius of the P cluster, which is small compared to the distance. And this way you can relate it to the lower bound that we already know to opt and you have some kind of epsilon times this lower bound. Okay, so maybe I skip any further details. So this gives our main reduction result. And so for any alpha approximation for TSP, we get this beta reduction. So alpha plus two minus epsilon for capacity vehicle routing and alpha plus one minus epsilon for the special cases of unit demands or splittable demands which is the first improvement for more than 30 years on this problem. As a byproduct, we also uh, improved the ratio for regret bounded vehicle routing from 15 to 10. 
And this immediately gives uh, uh, one plus one. So that means 11 approximation for the school bus problem by a reduction uh, of uh, some Waterloo group or some Waterloo et al group, uh, Jochen and Laura and some others. Um, okay, uh, very recently, just uh, two months ago, um, a group uh, put, uh, published a new paper on archive that actually gives a further improvement on this, uh, for this unsplittable case. They improved uh, the approximation ratio um, to alpha plus LN2, um, plus essentially to alpha plus LN2, um, by doing, uh, yeah, this is, I said already, it looks a bit wasteful to go to the depot back so many times, and indeed that can be improved as they showed. Um, and it, this can be then combined with our result to get an even better um, approximation ratio. For the unit demand or splitter demand, um, this new paper uh, did not give any further improvement, but clearly that's a very interesting recent result. Now again, we have some, some open questions. Um, yeah, can we do better than, for example, in the end, in the last step, I start at the bottom of this page. Um, we, after having computed the DSP tool, we just do the tour partitioning as in the classical sense, but that seems a bit wasteful because we actually reconstructed more or less up already. We just put it together into his P2 again and split it again. So that seems a, a waste. Uh, and maybe one could gain much more there at this place, but uh, it seems also not so easy. So that would be open for uh, future research. I said the hardness results are uh, very weak. This is the same as for TSP. And also we don't know very much about the integrality ratio. So our result um, does not give any improved upper bound on the integrality ratio for capacitated big routing. So here I put the LP. So here we have again these, these cut constraints. Um, here I assume the triangle inequality so I can have degree equal to two everywhere. But now I have additional cut constraints. If I have a group of customers of large demand, um, then of course I need more tours to enter that group. And that is encoded by uh, this kind of constraint, which one could even round up. So that's another question. Uh, how, how about this LP? Then we cannot solve it anymore in, in polynomial time, but we can solve it uh, approximately up to one plus epsilon in polynomial time. But again, this is open whether this is what this integrality gap is. And with this, I want to close and thanks for your attention. Great, let's thank Jens for his nice talk. Are there questions? And, yeah. Maybe I stop sharing, then I see you or some of you. Anyone have a question? So I have a question in that I know you think about sort of applications of this, like working with companies, IBM and DHL and things like this. So are there things that they think about in practice that are not well captured here? Or, or like, are there interesting other constraints that you have to deal with when you're thinking practically? Yeah, of course, there are many constraints. So in practice, uh, we do a vehicle routing problem indeed with uh, DHL or with a startup company called Greenplan that uh, was uh, founded just, yeah, in the, with this project um, where we deal with a lot of other constraints. We have a different uh, heterogeneous vehicle fleets with different capacities with, um, we have most importantly uh, time windows so that, that customers must be visited within certain time windows. Then also we have uh, not constant travel times, but travel times that depend on the time of the day, right? In rush hour, it takes longer than in off peak hours. And uh, yeah, a num large number of more constraints that we, that we deal with there. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of, 
different techniques that one would use for such problems. But still, it's uh, I like it to do to do both the theory and the practice. And although the techniques are not the same, I think we still learn from doing both. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, let's thank Jens again. I think you muted, Joseph. Was, it, was that a question? Ah. Yeah. Uh, so, Jens, a couple of questions. So, one, uh, <laughs> well, actually, more than a couple. So, first one, uh, when is your book coming out on the TSP? Ah, we are working on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I have a kind of sabbatical this summer, so there's a good chance. Yeah, looking forward. Um, uh, so uh, another quick question, this, uh, uh, the Carlin et al. Uh, result, uh, I presume you have studied it very well, uh, and I haven't actually looked so deep into it. Uh, what is your feeling whether a more, uh, um, uh, well, let's say a, a non-probabilistic uh, uh, improvement on uh, three half, uh, is it on the horizon or it looks far away? Yeah, that's, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think that it's maybe possible to de-randomize that algorithm, but it will not become simpler in this way. So if you ask for something, a different combinatorial approach, uh, I don't know. I have thought about this certainly, but without success so far. Um, yeah, that's impossible to predict. It could be not so far away, but it could also be 20 years away. Okay. Uh, and and one uh, one last one uh, since actually Bill Cook is also around. Uh, have have either of you uh, looked into this uh, traveling tournament problem? This is uh, something that uh, Mike Trick has been uh, uh, studying. Well, uh, it's been around for twenty years, I think. Uh, and the uh, issue is that even uh, pretty small instances they are not able to solve to optimality. Well, that question should go to Bill. <laughs> uh, yeah, I myself have not worked directly on, but it's as you report, even I'd forgotten like 20 teams or something, they're not able, right. able to stop. Yeah, that uh, Bill can do much better than I. Okay. If Bill cannot do it, I will, I will not try. Okay, thanks. Okay, sorry for uh, cutting you off there, Joe. So let's uh, thank Jens again for his talk. Thank you.